Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Sundquist. Um, I uh, am one of the co-founders of Plotly. Um, and today, I'm going to talk a little about how Plotly and Tableau can work together, and then also explain some of the, reason, um, the reasoning that we have behind thinking about that question in the first place. Um, so um, a, lot of the, a lot of the interest um, that we have in Plotly started with um, the problems that we experienced in all of our own workflows. Um, I assume that if you're here, quick show of hands, who in here regularly makes graphs as part of their? OK, so I assume this will be familiar subject material to most of you. Um, when I first got interested in making graphs, it was a couple years ago, I was working at this uh, nerdy Supreme Court blog called SCOTUS Blog and uh, making graphs and trying to understand the legal system and the Supreme Court. Um, and whenever I made graphs, I had this big problem where I would like make a graph and then put an image somewhere and it would get really rasterized and then I wouldn't know where the data was and I could never like do interesting or cool stuff. And I had been a philosophy major, so I was just kind of chalk this up to my technical ineptitude. Um, and then I became more interested in this and I did this research project where I started coding and I was using R and Python to make graphs and I set up a database and started doing all of this other stuff. Um, and I started working with people who were like real statisticians and real data scientists and was shocked when we talked because they had just come to live with these same problems and it was just ubiquitous because what would happen would be I would write some code to get some data out of a database, the code would come back, it would be really messy, I would try and clean it up and then I would have a new data set and then I would make a graph and then so I would have all of these different attributes to it because I would have code that I had used to extract the data from the database, I would have a secondary file that I had created after I had munged the data and I would have code that I'd used to transform that and then I would have code that I'd used to make the, the graph and then I would have a graph and I would take a screenshot of this graph and maybe put like an arrow on it in another program that would be like this is an interesting thing and then I would email these things and like huge data files and scripts and all of these other things to the people that I was working with and I was using Python, this other guy was working with R, my other friend was working with Excel and it took us months to do this project and I was really shocked by this. Um, and then around this time was when I met Jack and Alex and Chris and we, they had all experienced this same problem in their own industries as well and had been working on this problem and thinking about it too. And the interesting thing that we thought about was, and the problem behind a lot of this is, when you work like that, you can't ever reproduce your work. You can't share it, you can't work on it with other people. Um, and that's really a big practical pain for you if you want to like, you know, do something besides emailing data back and forth. But it's also a scientific problem because you can't share reproducible projects that other people can work on and can work from the same starting point with you when you can't have all of the things that you needed to um, have in order to reproduce someone's project. Um, and so a lot of that thinking was what was behind each of our own journeys into working on this. And so the question then that we've had from that is, okay, now that we've gotten into this sort of space with being able to put together like plots inside of Plotly, how can we make that work with other tools? And like how can we all think about how to make an ecosystem of tools that coherently work together and are able to supersede the uh, artificial barriers that capitalism often imposes on us in sharing information and data back and forth between different operating systems. Um, so this is one example of how that can work with using IPython and Tableau. So here we're using pandas and I've just embedded a Tableau graph inside of um, an IPython notebook here. And you can see we get hover text and stuff like that. Um, and now we can do this thing where um, we can actually get the data out of Tableau workbooks because Tableau workbooks actually have a CSV endpoint that exists on every Tableau dashboard. And so once we get that, we can use pandas or we can use R and call that and turn it directly into a data frame. And so once we have that inside of a data frame, then we can do something like this and make a new histogram out of this using the data that we've just pulled out of that Tableau workbook. And now this kind of 
from here, then um, we can actually share that. So then if we go to open this chart here, we can open the chart and actually be able to edit it inside of um, Plotly, inside of a workbook. We get all of the data that went with it. We can restyle it. We can change it from here. We can share it. And so we get this link and URL that goes with it. Um, and all of the data goes with it. And then we have this ability to share it, have the code, edit it, et cetera. And then you can embed this. Now, the, then we can take this and put it inside of its own dashboard. But all of this is still inside of the Plotly ecosystem. And that's really helpful. But as you know, a lot of the other companies here are testament to this, um, there's a lot of capacity to work between companies. So you know, like we work a lot with Fernando and IPython notebooks. We've done collaborations with basically every team that is here. Um, you know, and Authoria was one of the first projects that we were really excited about being able to use also because it goes one level of abstraction beyond the graph and lets you share you know, all of your work together. But how do you do that with Tableau has been a question that so far, you know, a couple people maybe in their spare time and me and this guy Ben who's about to talk after me have thought a lot about and are interested in and we haven't really gotten that far in it. So one thing that we were hoping to do today was just kick that out to the collective mind of you all and we'll show you some of the things that we've started thinking about. So one of the first things that's kind of fun that you can do is this is actually a Tableau workbook here. And so inside this Tableau workbook, you can insert iframes. And so this is actually an iframe of a plotly graph here that shows a fit and a box plot with it that's embedded inside of the Tableau dashboard. And then I can also have a Tableau graph, and this is a Tableau graph that goes with it. Um, and then I can drop another plotly graph inside of that. Or here we have one that's about the Nobel Prize. So here we can do this. We get the plotly box plot that goes with it. And then we get the Tableau version of a bubble chart that's superimposed on top of a map and then a fit that goes with it. Or we can use things like Plotly's 3D plotting capacity and be able to have um, an S&P volatility surface and then have Tableau data that's below it. And one of the fun things that we've talked about and thought about for the future that's kind of fun is, so you can have both, as you saw, the CSV extraction method from Tableau, and then Plotly also has a CSV endpoint that you can get data from from any graph if you just put .csv at the end of your URL for it. And so when you open a, a Plotly graph that's linked to another URL, it can refresh that data. And Tableau can do the same thing, where when you are brushing or looking inside of a Tableau dashboard, you can refresh that data. And so the interesting thing for us and the question for us has been then, OK, how can we give an integrated experience to people who are using R, Python, MATLAB, JavaScript, a lot of the tools and the entry points that a lot of people use for Plotly, and use that with the database extraction and SQL power and a lot of the BI uses that Tableau has used. And so that's a lot of the questions that Ben and I have been thinking about and that I will now turn it over to Ben to let him talk more about. Ben. All right, hi everyone. And thank you, Matt. Let me just log in here. So instead of making you all raise your hands, I'm going to assume that you have probably played with Plotly and Tableau, maybe a little bit. But I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to give you a hands-on example, kind of a walkthrough of one of these examples Matt just showed you, a different example. But we're going to go from kind of step one all the way through. So I'm going to walk you through little by little how to build a, a visualization that can be um, using these two products together, OK? And let me just move this over here. So um, as Matt mentioned, my name is Ben Jones. I live in Seattle, and I'm the uh, director for Tableau Public, which is a free version of Tableau that anybody can download and use, and um, lets you essentially take uh, data that's in the public domain and share that broadly on the web. And we uh, have uh, journalists and bloggers, and as well as scientists, thanks, teachers uh, in various countries that are doing this. Uh, to um, tell data stories about the world we live in. All right, so the idea is how can we bring these two together? And let's do that. So I'm gonna introduce kind of what I think is a strength of Tableau and a strength of, of Plotly and see how we can combine that, okay? So 
One strength of Tableau, if anyone's played with it, is the ability to create what we call richly interactive data dashboards. This is where you have multiple views that are together in the same dashboard view, and then all those charts interact with one another. Okay, so that, if you just do a simple Google search for Tableau dashboard, that's what you get. And you can see a lot of these images here have multiple views all together, you know, juxtaposed next to one another. And um, if you've had any experience working with them, they're all kind of created in, in harmony such that, you know, interacting with one chart causes the other charts to, uh, to change, filter, highlight, things of that nature. But one thing we don't do very well is 3D. And actually, Plotly's great at that. So if you look at Plotly and do an image search for Plotly in Google Images, you see a lot of these really cool 3D charts. Um, you also see a number of really interesting map projections. And uh, we do map projections well also as long as you want a web mercator, in which case we do it great. But Plotly has got all kinds of map projections. Has anyone played with them before? I mean, we're talking about, so if you've ever watched, you know, um, The West Wing, you, you know that this is a really important topic uh, because, um, yeah, because it really shapes the way we think of the world. So there are these two tools. They each have their individual strengths. I, I know Tableau really well. Matt knows Plotly really well. And we thought, why don't we introduce our friends? And hey, what do you know? Uh, we introduced our friends, and we found a way for them to get married. All right, so let me introduce the example we're going to play with right now. So question for you all. Feel free to shout it out. Uh, Mount Whitney in California or Mount Rainier in Washington? Which one's bigger? Oh, yeah, you guys are good. I thought I was going to trick you guys, right? So actually, Rainier is bigger in the sense that its prominence or the distance from its lowest contour to its peak is much larger than Whitney's, which technically is at a higher elevation. It would be like if someone who's shorter than me came up right next to me and stood on a chair. That's Whitney versus Rainier. Now, we have a little bit of a chip on our shoulder about that in Washington, except, of course, when maybe the volcano erupts, we'll have a different story about Rainier. But for now, uh, Rainier is, is certainly larger than Whitney from its base to its height. Yes, Whitney stands at a higher overall elevation from sea level, but they're different. Okay, so that's just a fun little question we'll throw out there. Now, it turns out that there's a website um, out there that um, ha creates a table of the 50 most prominent peaks on Earth. Okay, so I'm going to get out of PowerPoint because I don't like it. And uh, here it is. All right, so it's peak list. Now, this is a super updated website, as you can see. Last updated in December 10th of 2007. So very, very uh, uh, frequently updated here. But this is a, a nice little table. Now, what we can do with this, which is kind of cool if you've ever played around with um, Google Sheets, is I can take that data out of this URL right here and just go over here into Google Sheets and type in import. HTML, okay, and I'm going to put that URL in here. It's a table, and it's the first one in the page, so I'll just give it a zero. And it pulls all that data from the website into Google Sheets, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, it has latitude, longitude, and um, degrees and minutes, and so um, that's actually a little bit of a problem. So let me just real quick type up this formula that I memorized and uh, convert that from degrees and minutes to, uh, to, to decimals. OK, there we go. And I can do that for latitude as well as longitude. OK, and this is going to help me make maps with this data set in both Tableau and Plotly. All right, and this is the nice little formula that is pretty easy to type in, like so. OK, and there we go, latitude, longitude. I got those in decimals. OK, cool. So now that I've got this data set, it's a pretty simple matter um, if you're in Plotly, and actually I'm going to use a different one that I've got over here with the same things, um, and, and kind of just go ahead and copy and paste all this data right out of my Google Sheets into Plotly, right? So here's Plotly. I got my own little account here. Again, I'm, I'm a little bit of a novice, so uh, I'm probably not going to do everything perfectly here with um, my visualization that I make in Plotly, but I'm going to go ahead and start making a chart. And I'm going to paste all this data right here into Plotly. I think I can actually probably just connect directly to Google Sheets out of Plotly, too. But again, I'm kind of a newbie. And I know I want to make a chart type that's a map. And this is where I kind of love it, because I can make all these really awesome type of maps. Like maybe I want to make, um, uh, maybe I want to actually go ahead and make like a full globe. So I can make a globe right here. And I'll just click on that guy. There it is. And so there's a globe sitting there, and I can spin it around. That's nice and fancy. Now, I want to put this latitude, longitude of these largest, most prominent peaks right there on the map. So how do I do that? Well, I just go ahead in here, and I know that latitude, that little formula I typed in earlier, is N, and longitude is O. So I can start to drop 
these dots on here. And then maybe, um, let's see, the hover text will be, will be there, right? And um, so I can, you know, I can make this cool map that I really like, and I'd love to be able to, uh, to play around with this. And uh, let's size it maybe based on the prominence, which is right there in column K. That's essentially how big it is, right? Okay, from its base and up. I can see where, where um, Nepal is over here in Tibet. All right, I can see where Everett, um, Mount Everest is. So I've got this great, um, awesome, uh, 3D spinning globe here, which is really cool. Now, I can also connect to this data in Tableau, which I'll do now. So I've got Tableau open, and actually, let's go ahead and, oh, that's the finished version. Ha. All right, hold on, let me just close that one. And I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna, so I can connect to this data in Tableau as well. So I can connect to my Google Sheets. It's right there, 50 most prominent peaks. I can connect to the data, right? And Tableau goes and gets it from that Google Sheets document. And I've got everything in here as well. You can see it's recognizing latitude, longitude, these little globe fields, which is great. That's the way it knows where to put it on a map. But if I go ahead and go into Tableau, and this is, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and check out a sheet here. And if I put latitude and longitude on there and make a dot for every one of my, um, my different uh, um, summits here, right? I can see I get this you know, map, which is great. It's, it's in Web Mercator. And, um, that's sort of the, the, limit, the limitation there um, of what I can do here in Tableau with the map. And I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the background just to kind of extend it out. And I can do some other things similarly to Plotly, like I can maybe color it by region. I can make it be um, larger if it is, um, it's based on its prominence, right? And I can maybe label it based on the summit name if I want to, so I can see where some of these big, bigger ones are, right? Okay, cool, so, and also with Tableau, I can make these additional sheets, like maybe I wanna see of all my summits, you know, which are the ones that have the, um, the highest, the highest uh, uh, elevation, but then which are the ones that also have, you know, like um, the highest prominence. So this is how high it is. Oh, I'm sorry, base elevation is a calculation that determines where the, the lowest contour is, but I can start with the, um, the prominence in feet and put that up here, right? And I can see, you know, which ones are the most prominent and color that by region. So I can see Everest and then, um, and some of these other, you know, Kilimanjaro, McKinley, Logan, these are all the, tall, the most prominent mountain peaks on the planet, right? So this isn't big data because it's 50 columns or rows, but it is something about something that's big. So in that sense, it's maybe it's sort of big data. Um, all right, so what I've, what I've done in Tableau is made a whole bunch of these little charts, okay? So I've got like a Gantt chart that shows the base all the way up to the height. That's Everest and then um, it's sorted by these different regions. And I've got one that shows you know, the number, the count of these peaks, of the 50, how many of them are in these different regions around the, the world. And so with the cool thing with Tableau, which I love, is that I can now take this, and I'm gonna, just for the sake of you all being able to see it, I'm going to take up the whole screen here, right? And I can start putting some of these things all together. So I can put my map out here, all right? I can put the Gantt chart down here, that's pretty cool. I can put the regions up top. I made a big list that I can, so I'm bringing them all together here, right? I can put the list over here. Okay, awesome, so you guys get the point. I can put these charts together, and I can also then, once I have them together, let me undo that, I can make them work together. So for example, if I make the top little counter here act as a filter, just by going up here and clicking on the filter, what happens then is if I click on the Americas, it, only shows me stuff in the Americas, right, or Asia. It only shows me stuff in Asia, and, and so on and so forth, right? So I can do that. So I can set up this interactive environment now where I can kind of ask and answer a bunch of questions about these 50 peaks if I want to. But I didn't really want this web Mercator map. I really wanted, and this is just really for the sake of illustrating, I, I really wanted that 3D spinning globe in there. Okay, so how do I get it in there? Well, that's where this integration can come in because now what I've also done in Plotly is you can take a look at my, my um, I made a whole bunch of these. I made one for a lot of different configurations, right? And well, basically it's one that shows just the uh, peaks in the different regions. And I also made one of this different mapped projection type called Winkle Triple in case maybe I was interested in that one instead, right? So then what, all I need to do is I'm gonna get rid of this Tableau map in here. Okay, and what I'm gonna do, see this little web page object right here? I'm gonna drag that on out here. 
And it says, what's the URL? Well, with Plotly, what you can do, which I think is really cool, is I can take that, this map that I've created. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is right here. See, if I take this map and I can see it's Plotly. That's my account data remixed. It's chart 204. And then all I do is I put a little point embed. See that point embed? I can just copy this thing all right, and put it right into my Tableau dashboard. That's the finished version. And say OK. And now what happens is I get this thing in here, right? So it's going to actually go to Plotly. It's going to open up the raw visualization. And that's like, oh, that's cool. So there it is. Now I can move it around in here. That's great. Um, so there it is, right? Smack dab there in the middle of this Tableau dashboard. But it doesn't quite go as far as I want because now if I filter on Americas, it doesn't really do anything. It filters all the Tableau stuff, but it doesn't filter the Plotly map, which kind of annoyed me um, when I f first did it. I said, well, I only want to see, and I actually want it to rotate to the point at which I can see all 16 mountain peaks in Asia. Why doesn't it do that? How can I make it do that? Well, that's where I uh, used this idea of a dashboard action. So instead of just dropping a website, I could put Google on here. I could put any website in there. I actually want to make it interactive. So what I did is I took my spreadsheet okay, of, of all the mountain peaks. And I created a URL right here called Plotly Globe, OK? And you can see I've got a bunch of different embed codes in here from my Plotly uh, account. So what is 217.embed? Well, you can see that's associated with a mountain peak in Asia, which happens to be Everest. So if I click on that one, what it looks like is it's actually just a map. It's just that same globe, which is filtered to only show the mountains in Asia. And it's, again, rotated to the right spot. Okay? So each one of these peaks has a region. Each one of these regions has its own Plotly globe that I created. So now what I want to do is instead of just dropping the, um, the, the object in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my regions just to illustrate the concept, and then I'll show you the finished version. But I'm going to make sure I've got that in here, by the way, and it is called Plotly globe. See, this is Plotly globe ABC. That is this column right here in my Google Sheets file that has the URL for all the Plotly visits right there. So then when I go back to Tableau, I can make sure this guy is on the level of detail so that now it's included in each one of these marks. And when I go back to the dashboard, instead of just having it be one URL, I'm going to go ahead and go Dashboard Actions, OK, and say I want to add a new URL action. And I'm going to say anytime someone clicks on this Regions tab, which is the one at the top right there, and they select it, I want it to pull up a URL, which is Plotly Globe. There it is. So I click this little arrow, and it, pulls, it lets me pull a field in of all of these different data sets, data fields in the columns in my data set that I've got. So I can say Plotly Globe and say OK. And now when I click on Mideastine Africa, for example, it's going to reload the Plotly chart and only show the peaks from the Middle East and Africa. Same thing with Asia. So I have this fully interactive experience now where all of my Tableau sheets are interacting with each other, and they're also pulling in different Plotly workbooks that I've got. OK, so that's the trick. Let me show you what the finished version would look like. So one of the great things about Tableau, you know, you can bring in little graphics and images. And um, this is a kind of a fully formatted version, right? But um, I can interact with it just like I was showing you. And I also made a tab for Winkle Triple, which is the other map type. So now maybe someone wants that. And instead of, the, um, instead of the 3D globe, maybe they're interested in seeing this version. I can do that, too, because I created these and added them. And again, this is really augmenting um, the capabilities of Tableau here, and as well as it's dropping this visualization here into this um, environment, this kind of a sandbox, if you will, that lets someone really explore the story from a, a variety of different angles using both tools, which is the cool thing about it. Now, because of um, Tableau Public, I can just go ahead and save this thing to the web, which is what I did. And so um, here it is on the web. So what I did is, uh, is 403 forbidden, clearly. Oh, I know why. Let's go to, let's go back to, well, let's just go ahead and save it again. That way we can, I, you can see the whole process. So if I start with, I'm going to get rid of this filter state here. If I go back to this globe right here, right, I'm going to turn on all these different country uh, colors. In, and then I can just go. Tableau Public, save the Tableau Public as. Now I have a free Tableau Public account, which is going to let me say, uh, and I've got it called Tableau Plotly Peaks is the name of the workbook title. And it's keeping my data in sync, meaning if that guy comes back to his table he hasn't updated since 2007, don't worry, my visualization will be updated the moment he does it. So 
Don't know if that's going to happen, but I'm going to save that and it's going to send it through Wi-Fi here and I get um, out of the Tableau workbook environment, it's going to just drop this into the browser now. And again, I can have all the same interactivity right there in a browser and, um, and I can tweet this out, which I just did earlier today, so you guys can check it out. But let me go ahead and do that and you guys can take a look at it if you want. This is on, so um, here's the... Here's the Tableau Public and Plotly graphs viz I just made at PlotCon. Boom, paste. Okay, so you guys can check it out if you have the hashtag PlotCon, you guys can download that and check it out. Okay, awesome. That's the little tricky trick for how to put Plotly inside a Tableau. Okay, any questions for me and Matt? Yeah. <laughs> Question here, yeah. Are we working on the globe feature? I got um, some great friends in the mapping team in Tableau, and um, they're really smart people. We're definitely, I beg for new mapping proje map projections. I think they're working on it. Uh, that whole spinning thing, right? That's kind of a, you know, it's like, like a, a D3 interactivity. That's, that's kind of based on um, how Plotly is, is constructed, and that would be challenging for us. We can have parameters that move things around, but the click to spin thing is, is, uh, would be a tall order for us uh, in, the, in the short term anyway. Yeah, good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, we, because of the license, we have to have a. Uh, you have to give us the, the right to publish it on our servers, but you own it in the sense that you can delete it um, anytime you want. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Right there. Hey. Question is, how did I generate the plotly embed, the dot embed? Yeah. The globe ones? Yeah, so the second layer they had to do was one regional versus Okay, yeah. Matt, so this is where I'm a little bit of a newbie, but what I did is, you can see in my, um, what I did is I actually went in, instead of having it all in one big table, I filtered the table so I've got a bunch of different grids in plotly, one for each of the regions. So let me just show you what, for example, the Americas one looks like. If I open up the one for just the Americas, um, oh, thanks. Can you can you turn me back on again? Thank you. Um, thanks for that. Yeah. So um, you can see what I've got here, right? Is I've got see all these different grids. This is just a filtered big old table, but it's only showing each one of the um, the the regions. And then on the uh, see these little layers here on the left, right? I created a different layer for every one of the regions. And then all I did was I just went over here and turned them off for the ones I didn't want to show. So I, you can see I turned off everything except for Americas. So, I, so now I'm pulling in the Americas because I can do that because it, they're from their own little grids. They've got their own little layers here, or I guess traces. They're independent traces based on different grids. I can turn off the ones I don't want. I go over here to the um, style and to the layout and go to geo layout and you know move it around to the point where I want it. Um, and I can just kind of play around with kind of where I want to get the layout and latitude and longitude maybe, right? Maybe I want to move it a little bit, maybe I want to tilt it. And then once I get there, I just go ahead and share it. Okay, then once I share it, all you got to do from there is go up here to this little shareable link, and I put it over here, thank you, in the, and then just put in dot embed, embed. And now here's Matt to tell you the real way to do that. Um. <laughs> So whenever you save, like on Plotly, when you're filtering, if you whatever legend view that you save will be the legend view that is also apparent to anyone who's consuming the graph when they look at it. So he saved that legend view as a view that people would be able to edit through. But and I, I mean, and this is part of like why, like Ben and I were just talking about this. You know, this is kind of like the one percent version of what we would hope that this would be like in the future. Because ideally, this would be something that would be like clean brushing and filtering between both of them that would be an out-of-the-box functionality. And so that's what we'd like to eventually have. Yeah, and I think that there are workarounds for being able to do that more cleanly. Yeah. 
I told Matt I wanted to be spinning around and doing all kinds of crazy things. So we got a little bit of a list for each other here. But and this is kind of we did the brute force way, I think, in this time, and we're kind of like, yeah, I think there's a. We were chatting about it. Oh, there's probably a little more elegant way to do that. Yeah, yeah. So I, again, you know, as Matt mentioned before I came up here, we're just still finding ways to bring these tools and, and make them work copacetically together. Um, but yeah, good question. I had to kind of go through and make them all. And, and then once I did, like I was telling you all, what I've got over here is a little tab over here for every one of my um, URLs that I made here, right? For the regions. I've got one for the globe. I've got one for this funky um, map projection. And then I'm just using a VLOOKUP here within, um, within Google Sheets to pull that in for all of the data. So if I had, for example, maybe the top 500 peaks, that would be OK. Because I'm, well, in this sense, I'm only creating one for every um, region anyway. And so I could propagate that all the way down the rows. So, yeah, good question. What else, guys? What else do you want to know? Yeah, in the back. Yeah, so the question is you, you legally can't send the data to a third party server, and so, but you still want to be able to share a data visualization. Yeah, and I think that there's going to be a similar answer for both Plotly and Tableau, but um, you can implement your own versions of this software on your own servers, um, would be kind of the most, I guess, rigorous approach there if you have such a, a requirement. Also, we have. Um, as does, as does Plotly, a, a cloud version, which again, that's a third party server, so it didn't really meet your needs there. But what I just put it on was our wide open public server, which everyone has access to. So there's a whole variety of, of solutions there. You can also, I mean, in one of the ways a lot of people get started with Tableau is they just download Tableau Desktop, which I just use to create the visualization, save files and send files, and people get a free reader, and they can open the workbook and play with it. So that's kind of like, you know, simple, cheap way to get started. Um, but eventually, you're gonna, if you scale it, you're going to want to have your, probably your own server. Or if you don't have that requirement, you're going to put it in, uh, in the cloud. Good question, though. Yeah, and uh, Cynthia, Andrews, and I, who's over there, uh, we, we'll be hanging around if you have more questions about it like that Yeah, later on. What else? Anything else? This is kind of a fun project for me and Matt. You know, we bumped into each other at a conference a ways back, and we thought, are there ways we can make these tools work together? And uh, we're both definitely interested in finding more ways to do that. So if you ever have ideas or try some things, um, not just with Tableau and Plotly, but with all these tools, as Matt mentioned. You know, we're better off uh, overall as data workers, which we all are, if we, f if we find ways to bring these tools together you know, and not have silos of not just um, projects, but users. I mean, I don't think that that's a very helpful thing, right? We're all speaking the same language. We're all learning how to do some of the same things. So uh, in that sense, uh, the more we uh, find, get ways to have the tools work together, I think the better off we'll all be. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Just in time. All right. Thank you.